OK, this one I call extended slurs. We all know what lip slurs are. So this is basically kind of an extended version of that. We're going to start. We go B flat, F, B flat, F, B flat. I'll play it. And we'll, uh, it's a lot easier then. <laughs> So we're just basically skipping a note going up. So we're going A, B flat, F, B flat, F, B flat, B flat, F, D, F, B flat, B flat, F, F. And as you heard on that, I didn't, I didn't go from on the last one, that F to F. I didn't get that cleanly. But I'm not, that's not what I'm going after. I really want to make the air make that change, not the tongue. Make the air, the air forces you to make that change. So again, if you're, as you're playing it, especially I have a nine-year-old son who plays trumpet, and, and he can already slur really well because he does this, does this stuff along with me. But I always t say to him, and it's like it's all about getting the air, the speed of the air. Again, not forced, but just think of the air as moving faster. Okay. Okay, great. Good sounds. Um, once again, that, that process of visualization that we talked about, it's a good one on that one because we kind of, it can get where you, you get a little bit tight when you're making that last octave jump. So really, before you even start that exercise, I would just see yourself playing that and just hear it in your head. Just feel, really feel what it's going to be like. Imagine yourself holding the instrument. Imagine yourself being in third position, fourth position, and just feeling what it's going to feel like when that note comes out effortlessly, you know, with the air just working very efficiently. Okay, the next one I call flexing the fifth, largely because it's using this interval of a fifth. But basically we're starting on B flat, going up to F, back to B flat, down to F, back to B flat. <laughs> I noticed some of you making the adjustments in terms of pitch. 
That's great. I mean, really, in these flexibility exercises, not the most essential thing. Obviously, we want to try to play, be in tune on every note we play. But really, what I'm going for, again, is the consistency of time and really getting our airstream going, the velocity of the air. <laughs> Um, the next one I call broken triads, but it's basically, you know, kind of inspired by when you look at a Bach cello suite at the beginning, you know. So forth and so on. So basically, he's just taking the third and displacing it by an octave. So that's why I call this one broken triads, and we're taking the third putting it up an octave, and then add the fifth on top of that one. This one starts on seventh position, so it's going to go E, B, G sharp, B, G sharp, B, E. <laughs> <laughs> 